um, to my session today about the magic of uh, baking service provisioning and consumption uh, with cross-plane and serving spiding. So my name is Simon Sam, and I'm a preset specialist for developer experience at uh, Broadcom after the acquisition of uh, VMware. And um, I'm responsible for our internal developer platform products like Tensor Application Platform and Azure Spring Apps Enterprise, which we jointly built together with Microsoft, and also our commercial Spring products. So uh, actually, um, a lot of, uh, for a lot of um, organizations, the modernization of uh, their software towards cloud native applications is a huge focus or top priority. I don't, I hope I don't have to do that uh, too often. But um, yeah, so actually it's a top priority for a lot of um, organizations to modernize their applications towards cloud native applications to be able to grow their business by, for example, shipping software faster and reducing risk. Um, with, for example, being at um, able to be at the market early and also um, actually, yeah, um, validate their assumptions of the applications. And um, yeah, so with all those uh, benefits, um, those kind of applications and the modern um, infrastructure provides, the missing separation of concern and, uh, concerns and um, also the fact that um, there's a lot of co uh, cognitive load for the developers especially um, is a huge challenge for a lot of organizations. Nearly one year ago, um, Kelsey Hightower actually wrote the following. So for him, it's like the future, even if we're somehow there with some of the platforms, it's really that the developers, like in the past, only have to focus about uh, writing production codes, really providing business value, and don't have to care about all those infrastructure specifics, but, and just provide some little configurations, uh, policies, and um, configure dependencies, like, for example, baking services. And that's really also the current trend of platform engineering, so providing an internal develop developer platform in the organization so that developers can refocus on really providing business value with the software. So actually, um, this is also what we are focusing today in the session. So it will be really hands-on, and I would uh, like to show you really one of the core features of an internal developer platform, which is the interface. So not talking about a user interface uh, so or general user interface, like for example, based on backstage, what we see a lot, really about the interface for developers to request the, all the infrastructure and services they actually need for the applications. So really a self-service for baking services. And if we have a look at um, the CNCF landscape, we can actually see that if we scroll down, that, um, yeah, at the category of provisioning, there are several solutions available. So like, for example, one that I guess everyone here is aware of, Terraform, or others like, for example, Ansible. Um, so there are already a lot of tools, but today we want to focus on another tool, which is in the category of um, orchestration and management, which is cross-plane. What actually cross-plane provides or is, is, is really like, um, it enables us, uh, so developers and operators, to define, provision, and manage uh, services, so banking services, but in general, any infrastructure um, with ease based on Kubernetes. So it's really um, uh, based on the foundation of Kubernetes, so all those concepts like controllers, etc., that you define as a desired state, and the controller will try to, to actually... Um, uh, yeah, get the status of the running in, uh, resources into this state. Um, that is what cross-plane does for you. And really the focus is not only about 
resources that are internal to Kubernetes, so Kubernetes native solution, it's a lot about external resources that are not into the Kubernetes ecosystem and world. And um, with that, also the main focus of the actually um, vendor of uh, Crossplane, so Upbound, is really providing, for example, um, management of AWS, Azure, and GCP services so that you can um, manage all of them via your Kubernetes way, which is really great for people that have a lot of expertise in Kubernetes. And um, what it also allowed, what makes, makes it even more valuable is that you can create your own custom Kubernetes uh, API, so CRDs, for your um, so-called managed resources. So with that, you can really abstract away a lot of configuration for the users of those provided services, like, for example, developers. And um, what I'd like to do with you now is really go step by step to the different building blocks of Crossplane and show you how you can create such a um, self-service offering for developers based on a PostgreSQL database. And we can see here on the diagram on the left how all those different building blocks um, are working together. We will start with a provider. And actually a provider is um, really a building block that actually packages or enables Crossplane to provision infrastructure um, uh, 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 on ex external services like, for example, public clouds, but also there are provisioners available, for example, to execute Terraform or uh, then also um, uh, apply Helm charts or Kubernetes resources, just that you have one tool to provide um, yeah, self-service uh, capabilities to, for example, developers. And if we... go here to our um, terminal and have a look um, at, at our provisioner. Okay, okay, maybe I'm too stupid to write it now. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, but actually, it's like in my current environment here, I have a provisioner for Helm, one for AWS, and um, also uh, common other services. So, and with that, um, what it does, the provisioner, it provides, in addition to those controllers, it also provides um, all those um, so-called managed resources. Actually, the managed resources are CRDs for the different um, types of infrastructure one to provision. So like, for example, in our case, um, um, with a, we want to use a Helm provisioner because of the fact that um, it doesn't take too long to provision such a service. Um, we are, um, have the primitive of a, of a uh, or the managed resource of a release because usually what you have is um, that you uh, want to um, create a release of a specific Helm um, chart. And um, yeah, we can also have a look at it. So as I said, it's a CRD. Sorry, it was providers and not provisioners. Um, so here they are, sorry. Um, so um, we have one for AWS, as you can see, and also in the past, there was one huge provider and there were a lot of CRDs, as you can imagine. And it's like, um, and nowadays it's a little bit more modular. You can see I have a provider here for EC2, but there's also one for RDS. Um, for example, installed here, because that's uh, the main purpose of this um, uh, environment here, to really provide baking services. And you can also see the one for Helm. And what the Helm does is that it's providing a CRD for a release, um, which I can also easily uh, can have a look at here. So that's the CRD, you can see it. And um, if I have a closer look, I can for sure also have a look at the CRD um, 
uh, yeah, at the YAML file to see via the uh, open API specification which um, actual configurations I can apply. If you go to the code, we can also directly see an example here, which I built. You can see I set a name, and then uh, I define the provider um, for the provider which chart I'd like to use. This example here is a lot less opinionated than other resources, because with other resources, let's say, for example, an RDS database, you know, or actually the, the uh, provider has all the implementation to get the credentials and provide them in a the proper way. Um, which is also something uh, Crossplane really nicely supports. In this case, because any chart can be different, there is no real standard. It's like um, that, uh, yeah, it's not that opinionated, so we also have to add some additional capabilities, like, for example, where we get the required credentials from, which we'll see in a second. The only thing I um, um, want to define here is the value of the uh, persistence, so one gigabyte, which I will... Um, uh, um, do via the values here, so that's really something special to the provider. If I apply it, I can easily see that it uh, creates all the required resources, in this case, uh, what's defined in the Helm chart, in this case, for example, the ingress, um, uh, no, the service, um, the pod, the persistence volume claim, so everything actually this release needs. So we can see it's already applied, uh, synced, and ready. And um, with that, we can also then see the resources that are deployed, like the stateful set or the pod. So um, yeah, it's starting because it should take some time to start a database, but actually everything is there, which is really nice. The next question is, so we have, a data, we have an application. In this case, it's just a sample application of me. And um, what it does, it's actually running, in this case, on Knative to make it as easy as possible to deploy it. Knative is, is a serverless platform, also part of the CF, CNCF, um, running on Kubernetes with auto-scaling capabilities, but also providing high abstractions so that you only have to define a uh, container image. And with that, it automatically creates an ingress service for you um, and other capabilities, uh, like, for example, revisions, et cetera. The sample application currently have three instances, and as you can see, it has an in-memory database based on uh, H2, and on every ins uh, instance, I have a different emoji here, and yeah, now I want to get them all together, um, and for that, I need a, a, a persistent database, actually. And yeah, the question is, how can I do it based on the information I have? And if we go back to our terminal and have a look, we can see that there is a secret, but the secret only includes the information required for our Helm uh, chart, which is, or the database, which is actually only the password. So as you can see, it's only the Postgre, um, Postgres password, which is the password of the Postgres or the default user, which is for sure not enough to actually connect our application to um, this database. So usually, a lot of more information has to be provided by the operators to the developers to get it working. But um, yeah, with a cross-plane, we're able to uh, define and find all those secrets based on the managed resources. And if we go uh, back, we can see how that looks like. So if we have a look here at the more advanced example, we can see in addition to some additional configuration that I need, because I'm actually creating, so that's all just the Helm details, uh, building, uh, creating a new user called default, 
and the database. The reason for that is that um, actually with that, it's defined in the pod as an environment variable and I can actually use this information as you can see here. So um, what um, um, Crossplane provides is this connection details configuration. And then you can see that I'm accessing for these different resources that are created by the Helm chart, I'm um, accessing different configurations of it. Like for example, from the service that is auto, um, created, I'm accessing the port or um, also the host, uh, which is defined as an IP. I'm from the secret that we saw selecting the password. So uh, previously it was only the Postgre password, but because of the fact that I'm creating a new user, there's also a password for this user which I'm using and setting then um, yeah, the, the key for it. Also from the stateful set, um, I'm getting some environment variables, for example, the username and the database. And if I apply that, we can see that there is a secret generated with all the information I need. So now you can see I have everything there. So really great way to actually um, yeah, create all the information your application needs in one place. To actually bind it to our application, um, we can do the yeah, most easiest way of just using environment variables and mounting the secret, also mounting the full secret to the application. which you can see here as an example. So I'm using the same container image and then I have, for example, the Spring Data uh, source URL, um, PostgreSQL, um, uh, the host, the port that will be used within that JDBC URL and also the password and the database. Uh, because of the environment variable, I will use env subst here um, to uh, apply it. Um, and um, yeah, now as soon as my application is ready, I can actually see the result. if you apply the uh, right one. And um, now we can see if I rerun that get pods command that um, actually the next revision will be um, created with all the um, yeah, new end variables. Take some time to spin them up because uh, this spring application is not optimized for serverless runtime, which is for sure possible. But um, yeah, then as soon as the revision is ready, we should see the result. So as you can see now, um, we are powered by PostgreSQL, and we are actually um, yeah connected with our application to the provisioned um, database which is great. So um, yeah, now we have more or less everything um, that we need to provide such a self-service. But actually it's like there's a lot of room for improvement because it's like, um, yeah, now the developers still need um, to know everything about the Helm charts, um, everything about how to deploy the application. So uh, there's a lot of Kubernetes um, and special expertise for the Helm charts involved. So the question is, how can we optimize that? And um, fortunately, Crossplane provides a way to create your own custom so resource um, uh, definitions as an interface, for example, for the developers. 
And this is uh, what's done by a so-called composite resource definition, so XRD. This is really defines the interface of um, a so-called composite resource, which is then at the end the resource you can create as a developer and only um, uh, have to configure specific configurations that are relevant to you. The rest will be served by the operators. And uh, there's another um, um, uh, building block called Acclaim because of the fact that composite resources are cluster-wide resources. Acclaim is a namespace resource, which is really great for, for, um, for self-service capabilities because then you can really provide one namespace, for example, per app. A composition is actually the configuration of a composite resource, which um, then defines how a managed resource will be applied. And uh, you can also for sure have multiple managed resources in a composition, and you can also reference other composite resources in a composition. And with that, you can really modularly build, um, yeah, or offer services that are um, actually not one specific thing. You can really provide, for example, uh, profiles for different services that are common for a specific type of application, et cetera. Let's now have a closer look, because we also run a little bit of time because of those delays, um, um, how that looks like, so that we also have a few minutes for the service binding stuff. So if you go back here, um, we can see that, um, or how this uh, um, uh, composite resource definition looks like. It really looks familiar to you if you're aware of custom resource definitions because actually what we define is a name and this name is based on um, the uh, name here, so the plural, plus uh, the group. So that has to be always the same. And um, then we have different versions, even if it's not possible if you provide different versions to, in a way, break the API, so it's not possible to add additional required, resource, um, required properties, and it's also not possible to change properties that are defined. And with that, usually the recommendation is, for example, to create new um, composite uh, resource definitions for new versions. You can see in this easy example, we're just providing one uh, configuration for the database, and that's uh, the amount of storage that's required in gigabyte. Uh, that's our API. The rest is about, okay, which connection secret keys we want to expose in the namespace. And then there's another concept I already explained is a claim. It's like in um, comparison to composite um, resources, claims are um, namespace scoped. So that with that, um, as I said, it's a lot easier to provide a self-service for the full organization. If we have that, if we have a look at how a claim looks like, it really creates a CRD for it automatically. So that's this PostgreSQL database, which I defined here as an interface. Um, and um, yeah, we just provide the storage and we can also, based on, on um, uh, what uh, Crossplane is adding, we can also define where the secret will be written to because this is what we know if we want to mount it. This is how a composite resource looks like. So that's uh, the X in front of it, as you can see here. So that's just a definition by me. It looks more or less the same. The difference is that it's not namespace scoped and therefore, for example, we have to provide a namespace here. And um, then for the service, it looks the same. So just embedding it and um, last but not least, we have one of the most important parts here. In addition to the interface, we need the actual implementation which in this case is a composition. So it's really about um, multiple resources um, that you can define here. Like for example, in our case, it's just the Helm chart um, release CRD, which we also had before with all the relevant information that we need for the configuration. You can see that I didn't define the name and the namespace here only for placeholders because that's something I can uh, actually change in a composition based on also the information provided by the claim or the composite resource. So uh, you can see here are the connection details, it's all the same, and then we have so-called uh, patches and uh, transforms where we can then change the information here to so really template those resources. Like for example here that I, um, because the Helm chart that requires the storage persistence capacity in gigabyte that I just, um, or it's not um, specific on, on uh, the, the um, 
talking about that's gigabyte or megabyte, and therefore I add it here because my interface is just about gigabytes. And um, for example, then here with those uh, transforms, add the, the GI for it. See that I use the, um, for example, the claim namespace and set the namespace, um, the name, metadata name, etc., and a lot of more stuff. So really templating the stuff. Let's move to the next thing. Um, actually, so this is, if I apply all the stuff, we have our interface, uh, which is working great. And um, this is what then the developer would do. And for sure, it's only the implementation of an interface. So you could, for example, provide it via UI. Um, and um, uh, for example, a UI in backstage, a plugin, and then underneath you have GitOps uh, where all those uh, Custom resources will be applied so the developers don't have to interact with it. That would be the best experience. But if you have developers that are in a way familiar with it or you just provide them a Git repository for GitOps, they could also create this uh, themselves because it's like, as you can see, it's really focused on the stuff they should be aware of. Maybe you could also provide things like resource limits, et cetera, if it's about the application, maybe not the database. So if we have that, we have more or less the same experience than we saw uh, before with the release, but with a lot better interface for developers. Um, and um, yeah, the question is, or still the question that's unsolved is how, is there a way to uh, even improve the experience? Because one challenge we had, I, um, I showed you is I still um, have to be aware how the secret looks like and how I can mount it to my application to get it working. So that's still, still something uh, left. And this is where we have a new technology, uh, uh, an additional technology, which is called um, service bindings for Kubernetes. So, uh, and what is it about? It's really about um, a way of automatically mind um, um, mounting secrets, so direct secrets that have a specific format, or also so-called um, provisioned uh, services to an application without having that uh, to do that manually. So like, for example, you saw we mounted those different environment variables. We could also have mounted the full secret and we have to define it in our Knative um, YAML. And that's something that's automatically done for you by the service binding. And there's even more. So because of the fact that those secrets are standardized, um, it's possible to use libraries like, for example, for Spring.net, there's also one for Python, that automatically recognize those secrets, that format, and set it to the corresponding spring um, uh, configuration properties. And with that, it's like, okay, here's my application, for example, as a Canadian service or a deployment. Here is my um, baking service defined by my claim. And then I have the service binding, which I just reference um, the uh, Knative service and my baking service, if it's binding compatible. And with that, I have a fully working solution and I don't have to care about secrets and, uh, secrets and also not the details of the provisioning. And that's something I will show you in the last minute. Um, so let's go back to the code and I will just um, yeah, apply it and then show you it live. So uh, yeah, here that's a sample. So I said we can also directly um, bind the service uh, service binding, so that's how a service binding looks like. So that's directly bound to the connection secret we have, but uh, and the service. But it's also possible, and this is what you, uh, what I want to show you now, to make um, the actual um, yeah baking service um, uh, binding compatible. And in this case, I did it because it's uh, what we saw before is that. Um, I'm able with a composite to uh, modify actually um, the different resources that will be uh, sort of managed resources, properties of them and templating them, but it's also possible the other way around. So I can also, as you can see here, change um, so the two composite field paths. I can also, based on information I have, change the composite resource and um, with that, for example, automatically is that um, which uh, uh, the, the secret name where the binding is available. And also, as you can see here, because I extended um, the uh, CRD, 
with status here. So that's what um, is, is part of this uh, service binding specification that you need um, a binding dot name with uh, the secret name. I'm actually extended it here so that um, we um, have this uh, status binding name set to uh, the UID of the metadata, which is also then set to the spec writing connection secret, uh, secret to ref name. And with that, my interface is really like, because I don't have to define my secret anymore, storage to gigabyte, the service binding, binding to my service, and this PostgreSQL database, so the, the custom uh, CRD for my interface, and uh, my Knative app, I also don't have to define anything than the container image because everything will be mounted automatically and said there is the Spring Cloud Bindings um, uh, uh, um, library that will be also automatically uh, injected for you if you're using a Paketo Cloud Native Build Pack, so you don't have to care about this stuff. And um, yeah, let's, I hope I get one more minute to just apply it and show it to you. And um, yeah, that's really the experience I wanted to show you minimal configuration from the user side and all the um, opinions, et cetera, by operate, uh, op operations are baked in. And with that, you can really focus on providing a nice um, interface for your developers. <laughs> Sometimes the demographic compressor I'll give you. Yeah. I'll take this opportunity to remind you that after this talk, this room will be empty. Um, we'll all go downstairs. There's a happy hour. I do want to remind you that that happy hour means that at 7.20, we're all out of the building, but we're here at 6.20 having a happy hour. Are there any questions? Yeah, we do we already have some questions? So in the meantime. <laughs> so uh, actually, um, until hopefully this one is deleted, what I can show you is um, all the samples are available on my GitHub account, so you can easily have a look at it. Um, so uh, here. Um, that's the repository, just Timosam is my GitHub account and then uh, cross-plane and service bindings. You can see all the different steps, also the commands are listed here. Um, so try it out yourself and um, yeah, have a look how it works. I think it's a really amazing experience um, and uh, yeah, providing a lot of value, um, especially if you use other services than for example Helm, AWS services, you can really see the ease of configuration and uh, that it works.
there anymore, okay? Um, so let's try to reapply it. Um, so it's a bit not proper. that the database starts that I requested and we can also see whether there's service binding. So that's the one I was trying to delete. So let's see whether it will based on the available service. Um, we'll come back in a second. We can also see here is the out generated service with a name as a secret providing all the information and what's special about the secret is that it also has a type like PostgreSQL. This is how the Spring Cloud um, Findings Library knows that it's PostgreSQL and how to set it um, and the provider which is um, yeah, generic. And now we have a look at the service binding. We can see still service not found but um, it should be also something then based on the service that should work even if I'm not able to delete it currently. So this will then actually inject the information because of the fact that um, my, um, it's PostgreSQL database, so that's the composite resource, has the status binding name. So that is where I'm binding to all the information with the secret that it needs. And with that, it, um, as I said, mounts the secret to the Canadian service and um, I uh, have everything I need. Even if it doesn't look like so, usually it was really stable, <laughs> the service binding, but it looks like I, I'm not able to get rid of it anymore. Well, thank, but thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank you very much for attending my talk and also the additional time. Yeah. Thank you. Th thanks for the talk. Can you just show, describe, or why not the Helm release? Yeah. I, I, I just want to see the status of that resource and see what's inside of it. can see I also added this um, additional uh, uh, um, postfix here um, so that because it's not um, namespace um, it's not namespace scoped um, and um, yeah so what did you want to see actually I was wondering if you have the secret or information about the secret that's um, the only thing I define here is write connection secret to web. This is what I um, also generated. So here is the name. And I'm usually the convention is to set this. Um, so it's in cross plane, all the secrets from different managed resources, you can combine them and also define them. And then those um, will be put together in a global secret where everything is embedded that we define. And then you can, based on, for example, what I shared, based on the composite resource definition, define which of those will be used by, uh, for the developers to put in the namespace. So that's something you can then define. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. What is that? So the <laughs> all the code is available, so um, you can have a look and also then have a close look how these secrets um, are defined. And, uh,